Okay. Hello? Okay. All right. I'm on TV. Hey, everybody. Good morning to you. What a beautiful day, huh? Welcome to autumn. Right? Got a whole new, whole new season. So we're going to sing about it. Yep. I think today's the first day of autumn. So we're going to sing about it and dance about it and all that stuff. But before we do that, we always have to breathe first, take lots of deep breaths. And Carly, do you like to sing? You don't like to sing. Okay. Well, don't, maybe a dancing. Okay. Well, because you know why I'm asking? Because um, we do a lot of singing in here and I, I hope people will sing along if they can, um, whenever they know it. But the thing is, is that, that the doctors, like they did a huge study, there was a big clinical study and it showed that while, especially people over 60, that while you sing and while you're singing, your vital signs go up and your blood pressure goes down if you've got high blood pressure. So singing is what? Good for you. It's good for you. All right. So that's why I have everybody breathe and try to sing. All right. So sit up straight. Take a nice deep breath in. Feet flat on the floor. There we go. Your shoulders up. Roll them a little bit. Exhale. Deep breath in. Shoulders up. Exhale. Move around. All right. Deep breath in. Exhale. All right, nice. Now we're gonna sing that song that you guys all know, and it's about you are my, well, actually, you know what? I'm not gonna do that one, I'm sorry, I'm gonna change. I'm gonna do, oh, what a beautiful morning, you know, cause it is a beautiful morning, right? So you're, we're gonna all, um, you know, sit up straight and go, oh, oh, Beautiful. Now, so when I say, oh, what a beautiful morning, you can start going with, oh, right? It starts out like this. There's a bright golden haze on that meadow. Oh, and you guys move your hands the way I do too. We're going to get some exercise. There's a bright golden haze on that meadow. The corn is as high as an elephant's side. And it looks like it's climbing way up to the sky, everybody. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I got a wonderful feeling. Everything's going my way. All the cattle are standing like statues. Yeah, those cattle are standing like statues. They don't even wink as they see me go by. But a little brown maverick is winking its eye, everybody. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I got a wonderful feeling. Everything's going my way. All the sounds of the earth are like music. All the sounds of the earth are like music. The breeze is so busy here, don't miss a tree. An old weeping willow is laughing at me. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I got a wonderful feeling. Everything's going my way. Everybody sing. Everything's going my way. Hey, 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 Abdullah. I saw him just sneak out. All right. Well, good to see everybody. And we're going to get singing about autumn. And I'm, uh, you know, this, even though I'm on TV and everything, it's live, right? So I'm going to ask you guys where your favorite place to go. If you could go anywhere during the autumn of the year, which starts in September, like right about now, and then goes all the way till December 21st. Where would you go, Kathy, if you could go in the uh, somewhere in the, right now, in the autumn of the year, where would you go? Like to the forest, where? Where would you go if you could go anywhere right now? New York? Wait, I didn't hear you. Wow. 
Say it again. New York. New York? All right. That's so funny. That's what we're going to talk about in just a second. Go to New York. Well, how did you know? Because New York is awful pretty in the autumn, right? So pretty that they wrote a song about it. How about you, Carly? Where would you go this time of year? If you could go anywhere, if you had a magic plane ticket. Berkeley, California. Berkeley's pretty nice. Or how about um, Louisiana? Or how about uh, Paris, France? That's it. You go to Paris. Okay. I like that place. I have to tell you about it. I was in Paris in the autumn of the year many, many years ago, and it was lots of fun. How about you, Trudy? Where would you go? Nice and loud because you got that mask on. Where would you go? San Diego, California. Where? San Francisco? East San Diego, California. San Diego, California. Oh, man. San Diego is so awesome. You could go there any time of the year and it's beautiful, right? Hi. That place, that place is pretty cool. All right. Well, how about, wait a second, Beatrice. I don't want to let you out of here. Where would you go in the autumn of the year? Louisiana. Louisiana. I think that's a good time to go to Louisiana, right? Because it's not too hot, right? It's, it's cooling down a little bit. That's correct. Is that right? It's cooling down in Louisiana right now. It's not quite as hot. How about you, Lily? What time, where would you go in the autumn of the year? Where would you go? Would you like to go to China? Hong Kong. All right. I've never been to Hong Kong. You'll have to tell me about it. Well, guess what? And Cherie, I can't, I can barely see you, but if you say, if you tell me something, I'll hear you. What do you think? Um, where would you go in the autumn of the year? Nice and loud. You'd go to Guam. All right. I love it. We have all these different places. That's so cool. I know I, I, I can't decide where I would go. It is so beautiful. I'm, you know, I love the mountains, California mountains, but right now, unfortunately, they're kind of uh, on fire. So I don't want to go there now, but you know, there's lots of good places. And so we're going to sing about them all. I don't know any songs about Hong Kong, unfortunately, but I'll, I know songs about lots of other places. So we're going to do this song, and it's about New York. And I'm going to start out with this one. Wait a second. I'm getting my tambourine. Okay. So this is a, about going to New York any old time. And so can you clap your hands like this? Go side to side like this. Go like this. Start spreading the news. I'm leaving today. I want to be a part of it. New York, New York. Those little town blues are melting away. I'll make a brand new start of it. In old New York, if I can make it there, I'll make it anywhere. It's up to you, New York, New York. Oh, right. Yeah, I, I would love to go to New York right around now. It is so pretty. Well, actually, even later, early November. Oh, my gosh. I have to tell you about my little thing. Okay, so I tell a couple stories in this class, but you guys can tell them too. But since we're in Zoom and a lot of you have masks on, of course, you got to tell me if you're going to tell me a story, you have to tell it nice and loudly and clearly because your mask makes everything, you know, kind of muffled, right? 
or you can just put down your mask real quick and tell me. But anyway, I'll to tell you a story about when I went to New York in the autumn, and it was just amazing. I had been there in the summer, um, and it was fun in the summer, but it was so hot. And I'm a California girl, born and raised in Vallejo, California, and I don't do well in heat at all. And even when I'm young, was I was young, it was really bad. In fact, New York was kind of tough for me because it was so hot. But uh, when I was, you know, first time I went, it was in June. But I got lucky, really lucky. And I got to go there in autumn um, a few years later. And it was a whole different thing. I just loved the whole experience. It was so much fun. And one of the things I was really lucky because I had a very good friend who was living in New York City at the time. And um, we rode down up to um, through the A train. We took the A train. Remember the A train in Harlem? It goes like this. You must take the A train to the Sugar Hill way up in Harlem. If you take the A train, you know that you're be in Harlem, right? So well, I took the A train, and if you keep taking the A train to the end of the line, you end up right at the tip of Manhattan Island, and there's a pretty little park there, and there's a museum there that, get this, they imported the whole museum brick by brick from, are you ready, Italy a long, long time ago. I mean, they imported this museum. It's called the Cloisters. It was an old, uh, you know, it was a, a place for nuns and, and stuff, but they imported it. Now it's a museum, and it's really cool. And the, uh, the other cool part about it was it was my birthday. And so my friend had given me this gigantic hat, not this hat, but another hat that's even bigger. It was a huge pink hat. And on that hat, it had all these flowers and tool and right on top of it all sat a fake uh, dove. A bird. <laughs> oh, it was the funniest hat ever. I wish I had it, but unfortunately I wore it so much it fell apart. But um, yeah, so I had just got this big, beautiful wild hat and I was wearing it around the museum and New Yorkers have seen everything. So they didn't even, most of them, they don't even look up. They're just like, oh yeah, another nut. Um, but anyway, we went and the beautiful part was we went outside the cloisters and it was on the water on the Hudson River. And I saw, Kathy, what you probably remember there, all the autumn colors, right? All those bright yellow, bright orange, bright red colors of the uh, trees that line the Hudson River. And I just thought, wow, this is why they painted so many paintings of this place, because it is so beautiful. And so I was having a great time. And then another funny thing happened to me. So I had to use the restroom, of course. And I went into the, there's a little restroom in the, in the park. And I was in there and I just got out and I was washing my hands. And this woman comes in and she's got a cart. And in her cart, she's got blankets, clothes, beer cans, um, and a puppy on top of everything sitting there. And um, she obviously looked a little worse for wear, but um, you know, she kept staring at me and she was staring at my hat. And I was about to get ready to run, right? And because I thought she's gonna steal my hat, right? And she looks at me and she points to my hat and she goes, oh dear, I just love your pigeon. She thought I had trained a pigeon to sit on my hat. <laughs> That was the time. <laughs> and she and she was just staring at it. I said, Yes, isn't it lovely? And I walked out and she didn't take my hat. But anyway, that was the but I just love that. Oh dear, I just love your pigeon. Because she probably was trying to train a pigeon too. Because she was a, a good old New York street person, right? It's a crazy town. All right, you ready? So we're gonna sing about autumn in New York. Okay. And it goes like this. So we have to remember that you're seeing all the red and yellow leaves 
and the light is different because the light in autumn is definitely different. Um, did you ever get to go there, Carly, to New York City? Never did, huh? Oh, it's you got to go sometime. Maybe you can go. Maybe you can go tomorrow. How about you, um, Trudy? Did you ever go to New York City? You did. Did you like it? No, you didn't like it. Maybe too crowded. How about you, Lily? Did you go to New York City? No. How about you, Sheree? Well, we're going to have to use our imagination here. Abdullah went. Abdullah, didn't you go to New York City? Yeah, you liked it. How about, wait, how about the actress? The actress. Never been. Never been. Did, did you go to New York City? No, I have not. Well, we're going to pretend, okay? So think about the tall buildings and the Broadway, all that stuff. And this is a song about going there in autumn. So you got a chance. Autumn in New York. Why does it seem so inviting? Autumn in New York, it spells the thrill of first nighting. Glittering clouds and shimmering clouds in canyons of steel. They're making me feel I'm home. It's autumn in New York. That brings the promise of new love. Autumn in New York is often mingled with pain. Dreamers with empty hands, they sigh for exotic lands. It's autumn in New York. It's good to live it again. This autumn in New York transforms the slums into Mayfair. Autumn in New York, you'll need no castles in Spain. Lovers that bless the dark on benches in Central Park. It's autumn in New York. It's good to live it again. Anybody know who did that song? Frank Sinatra. Yeah. He did a lot of songs. Well, he was a New Yorker, of course, right? Oh, my goodness, Frankie. He was a nut. You know, he started out with nothing. Anybody like Frank Sinatra? Some of his music? I like some of his music. You like him? Okay. Well, so I got to tell you something, because, you know, I've been doing this a long, long time, and I meet all kinds of people from all over the United States. And I had this gal in one of my classes, and she was from um, New York, actually, she, or back east. And she had a boyfriend who was, when she was very young, who was a bouncer in New Jersey. And, um, and he was, oh, or no, he was, no, excuse me, he was a bouncer in New York and a big bar in New York. And Frank Sinatra, that was one of his first places he used to come and play before he was famous. So this is long ago. And he'd come and he'd, you know, sing some songs and then he'd have a little money in his pocket and then he'd spend all his money and buying people drinks and himself. And then he didn't have the money to take the ferry back to, <laughs> to New Jersey where he lived. So you know what he'd do? They took a couple of tables the bar tables they put them together and gave him a couple tablecloths and he'd sleep on the tables wow <laughs> that's right that's frank sinatra all right but he got famous in new york he sure did okay so we're gonna song we're gonna sing a song that you guys will know it's about a little place called broadway you get there when you were there kathy to broadway i bet abdullah did okay and it goes like this, and, and you guys are going to help me sing it. So when I say on Broadway, you say on Broadway. Everybody practice that. Can you do it? On Broadway. And I think you know this song. It goes like this. They say the neon lights are bright 
on Broadway. And then you guys sing on Broadway. They say there's always magic in the air on Broadway. But then you're walking down the street and you ain't had enough to eat. The glitter rubs right off and you're nowhere on Broadway. They say the women treat you fine on Broadway. Everybody come on Broadway. But looking at them just as me, the blues on Broadway. It's how you gonna make some time. But all you got is one thin dime, and one thin dime won't even shine your shoes. Everybody sing on Broadway. They say that I won't last too long on Broadway. Everybody sing on Broadway. I'll catch a gray hat bus to home. They all say, they all say. But they dead wrong, I know they are. Cause I can play this here guitar. And I won't quit till I'm a star on Broadway. On Broadway. Yeah. Isn't that a great song? I love that song. It always reminds me of Broadway. Oh my gosh. I have to tell you about my visit to Times Square. Okay. So did you get to go there, Kathy, when you were in New York or to Times Square? That's with all the lights and all that stuff. And it was really something. Um, but I, the first time I went there, it didn't look so fancy. And I'll tell you what happened. So I, first time I was in New York, like I said, I was in, it was June. I went to visit this friend of mine and she was, um, she was living in an apartment and she was, um, and it had no air conditioning folks. And it was about 90 degrees and 90% humidity. It was just, it was like a, a sauna bath in her, in her house. And I was like, <laughs> like that, like a dog panting. And I, and she was bartending. She, that's what she did for a living. She was out bartending and I was tired that night. So I didn't go with her the, to her work. I was staying, I thought I'd rest, but I couldn't rest. It was too darn hot. And so her boyfriend was there and he was just a nut. I'm so glad she dropped him like a hot potato later on. But he he just gave me the worst advice. He said, oh, Katie. And, and at this point, it was, it was about um, almost 10 o'clock at night. He says, you should just, I eat those. I can't walk with you right now because I'm right in the middle of developing some photographs. He was a photographer. But, you know, we're not that far from Times Square. And, you know, there'll be a lot of people out. You should just walk there and by yourself. <laughs> by myself. <laughs> but guess what, folks? You know what happened to my brain? It had melted. My brain wasn't working very well. And so I listened to this crazy dude. And I walked at 10 o'clock at night to Times Square. And it was frightening, absolutely frightening that for one, until you got to Times Square, there was no one around, just these big, loud taxi cabs, and they're ripping down the street. So even if somebody, somebody mugged me, they would have never found me. And then finally, and so I'm walking really fast, I get to Times Square, and sure enough, there's lights and all this glitter everywhere except all the people because by the time i got there it's almost 11 o'clock at night guess what who was there um prostitutes uh pimps and um gamblers uh ne'er-do-wells and gangsters they were all hanging out at Times Square at that point. It, they hadn't cleaned it up. I, later on, I heard Mayor Giuliani cleaned it up. But, you know, it was a mess. And I was like, oh, I don't want to be here, a young woman alone with all this mess. And so I decided, well, I saw Times Square. I'm turning back. And so I start walking. And all of a sudden, I had been walking for a while. 
and I see somebody's walking behind me and they're getting closer and closer. And it was like a man, I could tell. And so I was like, oh my gosh, what can I do? And just, I looked up in front of me and about 20 feet walking, the same way I was walking was this young couple. And it was like, what were the heck were they doing? It was like 11 o'clock at night and they're walking with this young child. They're both holding the child's hands and they're walking, you know, same way I'm walking. And so, you know what I did? Can you guess what I did? I just decided I was going to walk with them. <laughs> so I caught up with them and I walked, you know, about that. I was literally about a foot from them, behind them. And do you know, they never turned around and said, what the heck are you doing following us? They never said anything. They just let me walk with them. And finally, the guy who was following me turned around and left. And I got home and I was so angry at my friend's boyfriend. I almost didn't talk to him the whole time because I thought that man has sent me out to the wolves. And I was just lucky I survived. But anyway, that's what you do when you're young, right? Did you need to do wild, crazy things like that when you were young, Carly? No, no, maybe you did. I bet you did. How about you? I know Trudy did. <laughs> I'm just teasing you, Trudy. You're in the front row. Beatrice didn't know. Beatrice, when you were young, did you ever do any silly things? No, I did. I don't think so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, it just, you know why I found out? You know what it was? The scientists figured this out. Okay. There's a lot of knowledge in science. And one of the things they figured out is young people. Guess what? You're supposed to be an adult when you're 18. But they finally, they did all these studies of, about the human brain. The human brain isn't done. It isn't finished. It isn't mature to your 25 years old. And actually some men, it's not till they're 27 or maybe never. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, it's, it's just amazing. So that's why you do silly things when you're young, right? So that's why I did them. All right. Well, so we have to go to another place that's beautiful. And that's the... Uh, oh, well, actually, before we go to Paris, we're going to go up to the mountains. Okay, I'm going to get my mountain hat on. Hang on, I'm going to change hats. Okay, I have to find a good mountain climbing hat. <clears throat> okay, here we go. All right, I got my, my hiking hat on. <laughs> All right, so this song is about hiking up in the mountains and seeing the autumn color. And, you know, enjoying it and being happy and waving to everybody. So this is called I Love to Go a Wandering. It's an old hiking song from actually before World War I, like 1900. It's, that's when it's from. So and it has a lot of walking in it. So can you guys, if it doesn't hurt, can you pick up your feet like you're walking for 10? You're walking. There we go. And move your arms like this. All right, you ready? Okay, we're, pretend we're walking in the beautiful autumn colors in the, yeah. I love to go a wandering along the mountain path. And as I do, I love to hear a knapsack on my back. Valderie. Baldera, Baldery, Baldera, Baldery, Baldera, my knapsack on my back. I wave my hand to all I see, and they wave back to me. And blackbirds sing so sweet and free in every green wood tree. Everybody sing, Baldery. Valdera, Valderia, Valdera, Valderia, 
Valderon, my knapsack on my back. Oh, may I go a wandering until the day I die. And may I always laugh and sing beneath God's clear blue sky. Everybody, Valderie, Valderon, Valderie. My knapsack on my back. Yeah. All right. Such a good song. So, hey, Cece, welcome. Great to see you. Happy autumn to you. You know, it's autumn. And it's, uh, I, it's actually, folks, one of my favorite times of year. I really love the autumn. Of course, my birthday's in autumn, so maybe that's why. But anyway, but it's also so pretty. And I like to go different places in the autumn. I really do. And um, so, yeah, I like to go to the mountains. We were just talking about getting to the mountains. And Cece spent some time in California mountains, right, Cece? Have you been up in the mountains in California? Right? Did you ever go up there during the autumn? right before it snows. It's so pretty. I, I got to go up there not that long ago and it was just, the colors are just incredible. They really are. So um, there's this song that I want to sing and it's a funny song. It's about camping. Yeah, camping in the mountains. And it's an old, old song and it goes like this. In, uh, okay, you guys, you know what? We're pretending we're walking in the mountains as we're singing this. So everybody walk like this, hands like that. You don't have to actually walk, but just go like this. In a mountain greenery where God paints the scenery, just two crazy people together. While you love your lover, let blue skies be your coverlet. If it rains, we'll laugh at the weather. And if you cook, I, I stand look. And if you cook, while well, I stand looking, beans could get no better reception in a beanery. Bless my mountain greenery home. Dun, dun. That's from Bing Crosby, folks. It's about 1936, but I love it because, you know, you're up there in the mountains eating beans, <laughs> cooking beans, which I've done many a time. And it's, it's fun to go up on the mountains. But another place, oh my gosh, we have to do this one because this is about another place that's pretty nice in uh, September. And oh my gosh, I went there and said, I have to change hats. Hang on. Wait a second. I have to get elegant. Because in Paris, you have to get elegant, right? So I'm going to Paris. I'm going to tell you a little story about Paris. And it was um, when I was 21 years old, I thought I was going to, you know, I was in school, but I decided to take my own gap year, as they call it. They take some time. And I, I saved a bunch of money from, I had a little part-time job working at a bank. And my parents were mad at me. They were saying, oh, you, you won't come back and go to school. I said, yes, I will. But I need to take a break. I was just, anyway, I needed to take a break. So um, I had made this arrangement to meet these folks that I knew that had been a foreign exchange student. One of them had been a foreign exchange student at my parents' house. He was living in Amsterdam, but I wrote him and he was living with his girlfriend and they were gonna come down and meet me in Paris. But back then the phones, we're talking 1976, or actually by that, actually it was 1975 at that point. It, it was like, um, you know, the phones didn't work. Sometimes if you called long distance, there were these gaps in the phone and you wouldn't hear the whole message. So he didn't hear my message. So this is what happened. I flew into Paris. Oh, and I have to tell you what happened. I was so nervous because it was the first time in my whole life 
I'd ever flown by myself, right? And so that was nerve wracking enough. Plus I'm going to Paris, France, and I'm going to meet somebody. And I don't know if I, anyway, if it was going to work, but I planned to go to this one youth hostel. I made some plans, right? But I, what happened is the night before I got so nervous, I couldn't, I couldn't sleep. And so I was up all night and then I got on the plane and and I thought, oh, I'm going to sleep on the plane to Paris. That'll be fine. But guess what? Guess who was on the plane? The Cal football team. The whole Cal football team. They had won and they were going to Paris for some, I don't know, demonstration game or something. And this was back many years, years ago where they didn't, you know, they it was a free for all on that plane. They were throwing beers at each other across the aisle in the plane, right? They were drunk as skunks, yelling, ah, and I couldn't sleep at all. Well, the, luckily the gal next to me, she was very nice, and she was from Paris. And I was like, oh, I'm going to Paris. She had been studying in San Francisco and she had the most lovely French accents. And she said, oh, Katie, I can help you and you can help me. I said, how's that? And she goes, well, well, when I'm coming into uh, the airport, my father, my father and my lover, her boyfriend are both coming to meet me, but I don't want to go with my father. I want to go with my lover. And she goes, but my father will be angry with me if he came to the airport for no reason. She says, she goes, maybe he can give you a ride. He give you a ride to your youth hostel. And I said, that'd be great. Oh my gosh, that's like, I felt like I won the lottery. What well, kind of had? Anyway, so we get to Paris and sure enough, there at the airport, I, and her name I think was Madeleine. I, I wish I sure, I wish I had her address or now, but anyway, she, um, we got off the plane together and sure enough, there were her, was her, her boyfriend was this long haired hippie with, <laughs> with a scraggly beard, but her father was this dapper man who wore a, a three piece suit, a hat and gloves. <laughs> and he met, met her at the airport and she explained it all in French. And I knew a little French, I had studied some French and so um, I, he said he'd give me a ride. I said, oh, that'd be great. And he said, Katie, and his English was a lot better than my French. He said, Katie, are you hungry? And I said, yes. I, I am. And so get this, he took me to a sidewalk cafe and we sat and he bought me a sandwich and some coffee. And I was, and it was autumn. All the colors were so beautiful. And I was like, oh my gosh, I died it and went to heaven. I was so happy. And he he read, he he leaned, leaned over like this and he goes, Are you ready? You guys watching? Cece he goes like this. If you Katie, if you've never been kissed by a Frenchman, you've never been kissed at all. And he goes like this. <laughs> and I go, Oh, that's nice. And I I didn't want to kiss him. He was about my father's age, you know, anyway, but he still was nice. And he gave me a ride to my youth hostel. I never saw either of them again. And, but the funny thing was those people that were supposed to meet me, they were waiting in a, a telegram office in Amsterdam. And I was waiting in the youth hostel. And finally I called my mother and she was like, oh, my gosh, thank God you're alive. Um, I probably just given taken years off her life for two days. They'd been waiting to see me. But the thing is, I didn't get that message. They didn't get my message. And so anyway, we finally got together and I traveled with this young couple and it was fun, except they fought the whole time. But anyway, that was me in Paris. So are you ready to sing? I love Paris. Who, who studied French? Anybody study French over there? You study French when you're in high school, Trudy? No? All right. Well, we'll just have to sing it in English then. Okay. How about you, Cece? You study French? All right. Well, we're going to fake it. You ready? It goes like this. I love Paris in the springtime. I love Paris in the fall. 
I love Paris in the winter when it drizzles. I love Paris in the summer when it sizzles. I love Paris every moment, every moment of the year. I love Paris. Why, oh, why do I love Paris? Because my love is here. I love Paris every moment, every moment of the year. I love Paris. Why, oh, why do I love Paris? Because my love is here. All right. That's about Paris. And you know what, you folks? I never got kissed by a Frenchman, but I met a nice Yugoslav American and he's okay. I've been with him 47 years, for a whole long time. Anyway, so that's about Paris in the fall. We're going to do another one. And this is about September. And this was done by the happenings. <laughs> And this is this is a really um, dramatic song about seeing you in September. You're saying goodbye to your boyfriend. You're in high school and you're going to not see him all, um, you know, summer long. But then you're going to see him in September. And it goes like this. It's very dramatic. I'll be alone each and every night while you're away. Don't forget to write. Bye bye, so long, farewell, bye bye, so long. See you in September. See you when the summer's through. Here we are saying goodbye at the station. Summer vacation is taking you away. Have a good, have a good time. But remember, there is danger in the summer moon above. Will I see you in September or lose you to a summer love? <laughs> All right, that's about seeing you in September. Everybody ever heard that song before? You did, Carly? Isn't that the silliest song? It's so dramatic. Well, that's just like kids are. They're dramatic. They think that they fall in love and that'll be it. And, you know, if they break your heart and that's it, they're going to just die right then and there. Not true. We somehow will survive. All right. So listen, I'm going to do another couple songs. And this is about, oh, September is such a good song, a time to remember when you were, you know, younger. And this is a great song about singing and dancing and remembering. Wait, I'm changing hats. Wait a second. I have to see the right hat for this one. They ain't an old fashioned hat. Okay. All right, here we go. So this song is about dancing and remembering your old friends and seeing your old friends and and saying, oh, man, weren't those the days? I bet you guys sit around. I do that with my friends. And I'm only 66 and a half. Sit around and say, oh, man, remember when we did this, that, and the other? You ever do that, Kathy, with your family? Just sit around and go, gosh, we did this, that, and the other. And how about you, Trudy? You ever sit, your family ever tease you about the crazy things you did when you were young? Yeah, right? So this is about that. And Abdullah, you sing that too. And it goes like this. Once upon a time, wait a second. The first part of this is kind of slow, but the chorus is, those were the days, my friend. And actually, Cece, during the chorus, can you get up and, and dance a little, like a folk dance? If you know, do you know those were the days? Okay. Great. I'm dependent on you now. And everybody else, we're going to go like this. Those, 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 
Well, practice first. Those words are safe, my friend. We thought they never end. Shooting and dance forever in the day. It's just a life to shoot. We thought they never shoot. Those were days. Oh, yes, those were the days. So it starts out very slow. Once upon a time, there was a tavern where we used to raise a glass or two. Remember how we'd laughed away the hours and dreamed of all the great things we would do. I need everybody clapping. Ready? Those were the days, my friend, we thought they'd never end. We'd sing and dance forever and a day. We'd live the life we choose, by fight, fight and never lose. Those were the days, oh yes, those were the days. Then the busy years went rushing by us. We lost our starry notions on the way. If by chance I'd see you in the tavern, we'd smile at one another. Get ready to dance, Cece. Those were the days, my friend, we thought we never would get and then forever in the day. We put the lights to choose, we fight and never lose. Those were the days, oh yes, those were the days. All right. That, that's a great song. Yeah, who's heard that song before? Anybody know where that song's from? It was a lady who was connected to the Beatles. In fact, I think she was a girlfriend of one of the Beatles a long, long time ago. And her name is Mary Hopkins. And she sang that song. But then I found out that that song's an old Russian song. Right? And it's just amazing that the Russians know it too. And they say, that's my song. <laughs> oh, and this is a great song about September. So this is, I always call it, this is my song because folks, you know, I'm telling you, everybody over this age of 60 is trying to remember what they did yesterday. Okay. Everybody, it doesn't, it isn't, it's universal. It pretty is universal. Once in a while, you'll meet somebody over the age of 65 and go, oh, I remember everything. And you just, I just chuckle. I say, yeah, right. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> this is a song about trying to remember. And I really like it. And it's kind of um, very sentimental, like September, because it's fall, right? The leaves are falling. It goes like this. Try to remember the kind of September when life was slow and oh so mellow. Try to remember when rain was grass was green and rain was yellow. Try to remember when you were a tender, a tender and callow fellow. Try to remember, and if you remember, then follow, follow, follow. Try to remember when life was so tender that no one wept except the willow. Try to remember when life was so tender that dreams were kept beside your pillow. Try to remember when life was so tender that love was an ember about to billow. Try to remember, and if you remember, then follow, follow, follow. All right. So that's a, that's a cute song, right? It's just trying to remember, you know, when you were younger and you we might not be young anymore, but we, you know, remember who we are. Oh, this is a song about remembering, you know, and liking the age you are. And, you know, it's a cute little song. It's a country song. Wait, I have to find my country hat, folks. Uh, wait a second. Here it is. Here's my country hat. All right. My Dolly Parton country hat. All right. So this is about kisses. Everybody, we're going to kiss on this one. Mwah. Everybody try kisses. Mwah. You can kiss in your masks. Mwah. That's right. Mwah. 
Okay, it goes like this. And you guys can clap. When a young man in the neighborhood kiss, everybody kiss. I got thinking it over what I missed. I got me yelling and I kissed her and then and then. Oh Lord, I kissed her again because she had kisses sweeter than wine. She had, uh huh, kisses sweeter than wine. I asked her to marry and be my wife, and we would be so happy the rest of our life. I beg and I plead like a natural man, and then, oh Lord, she gave me her hand because she had kisses. Sweeter than wine, she had. Everybody kiss. Kisses sweeter than wine. I worked mighty hard and so did my wife. We're working hand in hand, make a good life. The corn and the fields and wheat and spins. And then, oh Lord, I was the father of twins. Cause she had kisses sweeter than wine. She had, uh huh. Kisses sweeter than wine. Um, our children, they numbered just about four, and they all had sweethearts and knocking at their door. They all got married, and they didn't hesitate. And I was, oh, Lord, the grandfather of eight, because she had kisses sweeter than wine. She had uh -huh. Kisses sweeter than wine. Now that I'm old and I'm ready to go, I get thinking what happened a long time ago. We had a lot of kids, trouble and pain, but I, oh Lord, I do it again because she had kisses sweeter than wine. He had kisses sweeter than wine. All right. Isn't that a cute song? That's a, how old do you think that song is? <clears throat> Anybody? 1951. Let's see who did it. 1951. So it's a little older than me. Jimmy Rogers. And who else did it? Oh, Guthrie. Arlo, no. Yeah. Pete Seeger did it. Okay. Anyway, it's good to know who did these old songs. All right, you guys, well, it's almost time to go. We got to do one more. Let me think. Um, I'm going to look for a good one. Oh, this is, oh, oh this is a funny one. Oh, I'm going to sing this one. This one's for me because now, because I'm 66 and a half, I wake up and I go, oh my gosh, my knee hurts. Oh, what's this pain on my tummy? But, you know, all those little aches and pains, you know, you get little surprises every day like that, right? Does anybody else have that? Nobody? You guys are all so healthy. All right. So I do. So this is songs for me. And it, and it's a really funny song. And so anyway, if you haven't heard it, well, I'm introducing you to a new song. It goes, it's by, um, what is it? Pete Seeger. How do I know my youth is all spent? My get up and go has got up and went, but in spite of it all, I'm able to grin and think of the places my get up has been. Old age is golden, so I've heard said, but sometimes I wonder as I crawl into bed with my ears in a drawer, my teeth in a cup, my eyes on the table until I wake up. As I sleep dims my vision, I say to myself, is there anything else I should lay on the shelf? But though nations are warring and business is vexed, I'll stick around to see what happens next. How do I know my youth is all spent? My get up and go has got up and went. But in spite of it all, I'm able to grin and think of the places my get up has been. When I was young, my slippers were red. I could kip, kick up my heels right over my head. But when I was older, my slippers were blue, but still I could dance the whole night through. Now I'm my older, my slippers are black. I have to the store and I puff my way back, but never you laugh, I don't mind at all. I'd rather be huffing then not puff at all. How do I know my youth is all spent? My get up and go has got up and went, but in spite of it all, I'm able to grin 
garden and see what the places my get up has been. All right. So that's a great song if you're feeling like that in the morning. Okay. Well, listen, folks, I'm going to pack it up, but thank you so much for dancing and singing along. And I'm, I have a hot, tough teacher. I get very hard homework. So here it is. Be nice to yourselves be, and be nice to you folks there. Right. And give yourself a break. Right. Really do, you know, just get you've all worked hard and, you know, just give yourselves a break. And, but, Keep singing, right? Don't forget to sing. And don't forget to take a deep breath in. Hold it. Exhale. Like that. And we're going to pack it up just like this. Pack up all my cares and woes. Here I go. Singing low. Everybody sing. Bye-bye, Blackbird. Where somebody waits for me and sugar's sweet, so is she. Bye, bye, blackbird. No one here could love or understand me. Oh, what hard luck stories they'll hand me. Make my bed and light the light. I'll be home late tonight. Blackbird. Everybody wave. Bye bye. Blackbird. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, you guys. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next Wednesday. All right? Yes. Okay. Oh, wait. And don't forget to howl at the moon. We're going to sing some. Wait, I'm going to end. I'm going to end with one other song. So tonight, okay, this is what I want you to do. I don't usually do this. Put your hands up like this. Go outside when you see the moon, okay? And you're going to tap dance a little bit. And you sing this song. Shine on, shine on harvest moon up in the sky. I ain't. Had no love since January, February, June, or July. Snow time, ain't no time to sit alone. This moon so shine on, shine on harvest moon for me and my God. All right, you guys, bye bye. We'll see you next week, okay? Don't forget to howl at the moon. Arr, 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 arr.